there, I have three photos from a crafting weekend earlier this year. I went to visit my friend Karen and we made a lot of cards and scrapbook pages so we have a really detailed photo here of the things that we accomplished. I also have a photo of me working with the Big Shot because I don't have a Big Shot so whenever I go down there I go through a lot of her dies and, and do all kinds of things. In fact, I when I was looking for supplies for this layout I went through my uh, stash of stuff I brought home from her and I had punched out these three. I think I, just, I was thinking of using them maybe as sunshine elements on cards or something uh, but I wondered if I could use them on this scrapbook page, but as you'll see in a minute, they're, they're not going to work out because of the colors. I think if you're looking at this, I know when I'm looking at it on the camera, her shirt looks blue, and I don't know how it will come out when it gets to YouTube, but it's purple. It's a, it's a deep purple uh, that, um, that I didn't really have any pattern paper to match, because you know, you've heard me rant before, purple's a hard color to find in scrapbooking. Um, I use a lot of lavender and, uh, and try to find as much lavender as I can, but purple is probably, well, unless you're doing Halloween papers, it's, it's hard to find purple. So since I was just doing the, the creative cardstock class, it seemed like a good time uh, to work with some of my cardstock. So I have a bright red shirt on, which surprisingly I didn't have a lot of pattern paper that was really bright red. Um, if I did, I didn't have a lot of it left, or it was earmarked for Christmas. So I pulled out some red cardstock from Paper Tray Ink, and the purple is a Stamping Up cardstock, and I wanted one of the lighter colors, was looking at some of these yellows, and this yellow just didn't really go that well, but the more mustard color from Stamping Up looked great. Once I put these three papers together, I just love this color combination. So I'm going to use those for um, some embellishment. I liked the idea, though, of some circular kind of embellishments, and I could cut something similar like this, like this with the Cricut. What I think I'm going to do instead, though, is to punch some circle elements, and I'll probably stamp them first. I pulled out this stamp set from uh, Stampin' Up. This is a current set called Lacey and Lovely. My concern with it, though, is that the elements are awfully detailed and intricate, and I think they're a little bit busy for the, uh, all the other stuff that we have on our uh, photos here. So I had this stamp, but it has a scallop edge, and I didn't quite want that either. So I went back to an old favorite. This is Big Flowers. It's an old stamp set from Stamping Up, one of the first ones I ever got, and I've used it on a lot of scrapbook pages. It's just really, really versatile. These geometric kind of things you can use over and over and over again, and they don't look the same. Uh, different colors, different designs, and, and they really look different. So I'm going to use those. Now that I look at it, though, these are kind of small. So I may end up using this one larger stamp from Lacey and Lovely to kind of um, balance out my stamped circles. And continuing on the circle theme, I want to do something with my background. I looked at doing just a dark background for this, but when I laid the photos on this really dark chocolate, it was too dark. And so I started moving up through the, the different shades of brown that I had, and I landed on this brown sugar color uh, from Stamping Up. It looks uh, pretty good with my papers here. This is just a piece of chocolate cardstock. I think it's paper tray ink that I have behind the uh, photos uh, to mat those a little bit. And on this lighter background, I'm going to add a little bit of interest with a mist uh, and a mask. This is the Studio Calico mask that I have used. You can tell how dirty it is. I've used and used and used this thing, and I do wash it, but uh, I don't know whether all this will come off at this point or not. It doesn't matter. It still works fine. I needed to find a mist color, and I went through a couple of different ones. I started with the Manila color and stamped a sample of cardstock, and Manila is a greenish tone, and indeed it did come out pretty green looking on this um, sample. So I tried another color from Studio Calico called Clay, and that's a, a lighter, a little bit topier look, and I think I like the lighter tone better, so I'm going to use the clay. The only other brown I had was a really dark brown, and I, I, didn't, I want the background to be more subtle than that. So I'm going to lay this out and mist it, and I'll take this over to a box and do it. And when I do this, I'm going to be working really just around the outside edges. I don't need to mist the middle because it's going to be all covered up. Oh, and I don't think I showed you the sketch. Here's the sketch. You can kind of tell from where I had the photos placed, but I'm going to put my circular elements in these three areas to create a triangle, add some journaling on strips, and then um, I'm thinking of maybe doing a tab up here at the top. I kind of liked the idea of having this look like it was inserted, kind of like a file folder option. That means I might round the corners. I don't know. Anyway, just uh, some ideas of where things are going to go. 
So here's my misted background. I like that little circular uh, mask because you can lay it over itself and go all the way around something and you can't see the seams. It just looks like it's one big continuous piece. I'm going to set that aside to dry and I have my cardstock here and ready to start stamping. I could stamp them tone on tone in the same color. I'm going to use Versamark and that will create a tone on tone effect that will be a little bit richer looking. And I'm going to stick uh, with some of the uh, ones that don't have a lot of flowers to them. First using the embossing buddy over these. And I've counted up and I need at least eight. Somehow or another I put four brads on my sketch and I know I'm only going to do three because I want an odd number. I didn't catch that when I was doing the sketch. But at least eight, maybe nine of the um, circles. And again I'm using the ones that don't have a lot of flowers. There's one there that's got a little bit of flower to it. That's okay. And this first one here always reminded me of the sun. So I'm going to do it on more mustard cardstock and use one of the others on more mustard. And coat them with clear embossing powder. And at this point you can set them aside and do all of them and then heat them all at once. Or you can heat as you go. So I'll heat these up right quick. And then I'll be punching these out with either one and a quarter or one and a half inch punch. The one and a quarter is a really tight fit, as I've shown here. I've got that uh, image from Lacey and Lovely that I want to use on the back. And at this point, I'm thinking of just of cut, of trimming it down, not using the full size, but using it, you know, cutting a smaller circle and using it at least part of it as a border. After it's heated up and I get the image laying on top of it, I really like the whole thing if it will fit on my page and not be too large. So I will need to punch or cut that out. My background is, I think, dry. I'm just going to go over it with a paper towel to be sure that all of the mist is uh, dried up there. And starting to lay a few things out here. I did find that the full size circle from the Lacey and Lovely set is what I needed. It needed to be that large and I'll use some of the smaller ones that I've uh, punched there as extra accents behind. So I want to end up with at least three that are stacked so I can put the brads in them. I did feel like they needed a little bit of distress ink. They were a little bit too bold and the Distress Ink with the other brown cardstock there I think will um, tone them down just a little bit and I can already tell that that's helping some. Now I'm about ready to do my title. Part of my title is going to be cut out with the Cricut and I want to cut it out and have the paper on the back show through whether it's the background or one of the other papers. I'm using Ashland's Alphabet and I like this cartridge because the letters you can see here from the sample I cut, the middles of the D and the O are part of the background so you don't have to end up pasting those back in if you're doing an, um, an inverse kind of look. So now when I uh, take that out I can put either the purple or the red or the gold uh, paper behind that. I did happen to have some purple thickers which was really nice and I want to add the word a lot in there and I've decided to do it with um, the Versa marker, and I'll show you in a minute the technique I use for that. I'm just getting a, a feel for whether I like it in white. I should have done my sample on brown paper instead of the green that I happened to grab out of my scrap cardstock. But you're getting an idea here of how it's going to look. My first sample I accidentally did with clear, and I sort of like that tone on tone kind of look, so I haven't decided if I want the clear or the white. The way you go about doing this is to go over the um, cardstock or paper with the embossing buddy really good and then write your words with the Versa marker. And I never tried this, it was just an idea I had, I never really tried it before and I wanted to see how it worked. So I've written out my words and I'm going over them with white embossing powder, so I decided to do nice thing about cardstock, if I don't like it I can recut it because I've got more chocolate cardstock. I'm going to heat this up and I'm heating the back too so it won't warp too much because those, those letters cut there I don't want them to warp a lot. And I'll put the word getting on there. I'm trying the, the red color 
behind it. And I'll neaten that up. It's just getting an idea of how it's going to look. And I really like that with the um, photos. The white picks up the white in the photos and the, and the matting. I'm trying the gold or the mustard cardstock, but I like the red the best. So I'm starting to get everything together here. The only thing I don't like, though, is it seems to have a tone that's a little bit dark to me, and I think the problem is the background. So what I'm going to do is, I, I like my stamp, my misted background, but I just don't think it's right for this layout, because this was a summer day, and this looks too fallish to me. Maybe it's because it is fall. So I had a piece of pattern paper uh, from Stamping Up. This is the More Mustard pattern paper. And with their pattern papers, a lot of times the color will be lighter on the background of the pattern paper than the real color. So if I pulled out a piece of more mustard cardstock, it would be a lot darker than this. But the pattern paper, the background of it, is a much lighter gold. And I think that's a lot fresher look. I can still use that um, cardstock piece. If I don't use the front side, I can use the back for another project. And I'm wanting to add some accents here to my punched pieces. I found this cork in the drawer. It's just, I got this at the at Lowe's Hardware for another project. I think I used it for the back of coasters. I didn't know you could punch this stuff. When I realized you could punch it out in simple shapes, I may, use, may have to get some more of it. But I thought it, it looked nice as um, a middle for those um, embellishments. I'm doing my tab thing here as well. I liked it on the embellishments because it was different. It was something different than just brads. I am going to add some small brads. Um, my tab, I'm going to put the date on there, but not with that date uh, stamp. It was too big. Now, I have some brads here from My Mind's Eye, and what I'm doing with the crocodile is I'm trying to punch a hole and put the brad down in it so it does, so it's kind of nestled down in the cork, but I didn't have a big enough hole to, to go into my brad. So um, I just put the brad, ended up just putting the brad through it to create the embellishment. You'll see here in just a moment. It's there in the background, and that worked out fine. Adding a little bit of ink to the very edges of my white paper. Here's our finished page. Let's take a look at the sketch. Got our groupings of circles here, and I did add a tab at the top, and uh, the titling here. And my journaling strips ended up being kind of wide strips to get all the words in that I wanted to add. Let's look at some close-ups. The embossing really gave a lot of shine and interest to those um, circle embellishments. Out of a old favorite stamp set, and I liked using the cork like that. Now that I know that I can punch it with simple shapes, I'm gonna have to see if I've got some more of that. So we started off with a different cardstock background, but we still. Um, I mean, change the designer paper, and I think I like that better because it's a lot brighter and. Um, Still use though, a lot of cardstock for the different pieces. Uh, I have a class called Creative Cardstock, um, and there's a link here on the video, so be sure and check that out if you haven't already. We do a lot of different things uh, with cardstock and really stretch that supply. It worked out great here because I just didn't have these colors in paper. I just didn't have any really dark purple paper to go with the the shirt in the the photo and my my red stash was starting to get a little bit dwindling a little bit so this was a good way to get my colors in there using the cardstock and making it quite a bit more interesting than just something that's real plain so anyway thank you for watching <laughs>